Good morning, good morning, my precious brothers and sisters in the Lord. How is everyone doing on this morning? I am quite sure you people have been enjoying my lovely wife, Pastor Amy Pender, who have been really breaking the bread, teaching and preaching the Word of God, being a blessing to God's people. I love the way my wife teaches and preaches the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And she will be ministering the Word of God to you later on into this broadcast, a supernatural experience. But before we go into the Word of God, and before you hear further from Pastor Amy, I just want us to just worship God on this morning. What a beautiful name. Name it is. Come on. What a beautiful name it is. The name, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. Sing it with me, church. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing, nothing compares to this. Sing it. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Come on, church. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name. What a powerful name. Come on, church. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God, as Pastor Amy comes to teach and preach the word of the living God, minister to your people on this morning. Touch every heart, God. Lift every burden, lift every weight. We pray for the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation. Let there be a breakthrough, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless your people. Answer their prayers. Bring direction into their lives for the glory of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And now, my lovely wife is coming to teach the word of God. Welcome, Pastor Amy Pinder. Love you now. Take care. Well, good morning. Have you been worshiping? Have you been going deeper in prayer? Are you fasting? Are you broken in His presence? Are you increasing your giving? Well, if you are, then you are about to have a supernatural experience. Are you ready for that? First, we studied the five strategies to a breakthrough. We studied about worship, prayer, fasting, brokenness, and giving. And yesterday we learned what happens as a result of applying the five strategies and what happens when God draws near. Remember in Isaiah 58, we talked about when God draws near that you get your breakthrough, that your healing will manifest quickly, that your righteousness goes before you, that God's glory will protect you, that God will answer when you pray, that you will feed the hungry soul, that that dark cloud hovering over you will break, that God will guide you continually that you will receive revelation from the word when everyone else is experiencing drought and dryness, that you'll have good health, 
that God's spirit would flow out of you, that your children would bring revival, that lives would be restored and backsliders will be saved, that you would ride on the high places and go deep in the things of God, and that you would inherit and claim the promises found in the Bible. Well, today I want us to take a look at a man who applied these principles and had a phenomenal experience with God. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 10 and let's look at verse 1. The Bible says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms. Their strategy number one, he was a giver. He gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Strategy number two, he prayed. Now I'm going to skip to verses 25 and the verse 30 so you can quickly see the other strategies that he applied. Verse 25 said, and Peter was coming and Cornelius met him, fell down his face and worshiped him. Now remember Cornelius had not heard the gospel message and like any new convert, a good pastor always instructs a new convert in the ways of God. So here we see Cornelius knew he needed to worship, but Peter had to help him understand that it was Jesus that he needed to worship and not Peter. So you could see that worship was in his heart. Then verse 30, Cornelius reveals that he was fasting. Verse 30 says, Cornelius said four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. So Cornelius was given, he was praying, and he was fasting when he began to have a supernatural experience. Let's go back to chapter 10, verse 3. He says, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying, unto him Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, your prayers and your alms or your given are come up for a memorial before God. So verses five through eight tells us that God began to give Cornelius instructions. This angel appears to him and God begins to speak to him and God tells him, first, I want you to send your men to Joppa. There in Joppa, they're going to find a preacher named Peter. Peter's staying at Simon's house by the beach. And when you find him, he'll preach a message to you and tell you what you need to do. So the angel leaves, Cornelius calls his men and immediately he sends them to Joppa to find Peter. Verse 9 through 16 tells us right when the men were getting close to Joppa, that God begins to deal with the preacher. Peter was ending the fast by praying when he fell into a trance and he saw heaven open and a sheet started to come down. And it was full of all kinds of unclean animals, animals that God had forbidden the Jews to eat. Then Peter heard a voice telling him to get up kill the animals and eat. Peter said, no way, Lord. He said, I've never eaten anything your law has forbidden. The voice spoke again and told him not to call anything that God had cleaned, unclean or common. This happened three times and then the sheet went back up into heaven. Verses 17 through 22 tells us that after the vision was over, Peter's there sitting, he's thinking, he's trying to figure out what all this meant. And at that very moment, Cornelius' men arrived and were asking to speak to Peter. The Spirit then tells Peter that three men are looking for him, that it was safe for him to go with these men because God had sent them in. So Peter introduces himself and the men begin to tell Peter about all the good things about Cornelius and all the good things Cornelius done and that God had spoke to Cornelius and told Cornelius where to find Peter. Verse 23 through 29 says the next day they left and they went to Caesarea and Cornelius invites a bunch of people over and Peter arrives. So then Peter begins to explain that it was against the religious laws for Peter to even come to Cornelius' house like this, but that God had told Peter to go. So then he asked Cornelius, what was the reason that Cornelius sent for him? 
Then Cornelius begins to rehearse the story of how the angel appeared to him and spoke to him. So let's pick up in verse 30. It says, And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man or an angel stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard and your alms or your giving is had in remembrance in the sight of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Sounds familiar, right? Remember Isaiah chapter 58, verse six, God says, is not this the fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free that you break every yoke. Is this, is it not to deal your bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast to your house and that when you see the naked, you cover him and that you don't hide yourself from your family when they're struggling. Verse eight, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thy health shall spring forth speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee. Remember Peter told Cornelius that God showed him that in every nation, he that fears him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. So what righteousness are we talking about? What righteousness is going before him? Remember in Isaiah 58, if we go back to verse seven, it says that your righteousness is when you feed the hungry, when you provide shelter for the poor, when you clothe the naked, when you help a struggling family. In other words, the righteousness that goes before you is your giving. And now because Cornelius' righteousness went before him, when he prayed this time, his giving was a remembrance or a memorial in God's sight and God answer. Verse nine says, then shalt thou call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. So now when you apply these five strategies, when you worship, when you pray, when you fast, when you weep and you give, the first thing that happens is not that God hears your cry. The first thing that happens is an odor of a sweet savor begins to rise towards heaven. Remember Paul said in Philippians 4:19 that your offering is an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And as God begins to smell this wonderful, sweet smell, he then looks down from heaven and he sees you there praying on your knees, but you're kneeling and you're praying is not the only thing he sees. He then begins to see the time that you fed the homeless man who was standing on the corner holding a sign saying that he would work for food and how you also gave that man bus money to make it to the homeless shelter before docks dark so he could have a warm place to sleep. Then God begins to see the time. You went through the neighborhood collecting clothes for the family down the street who just lost everything because of fire. And after that, he sees when you help your cousin pay her mortgage before her family lost their home. And what about the times you sent money to the missionary who has taken the gospel to remote villages or when you gave towards the church building fund or when you delivered Christmas presents to the orphans. Now God doesn't only smell your sacrifice, he begins to see the extent of your sacrifice. So now when you call out to him, he smells, he sees, and he hears your prayer. And he says, I am here, my child. What is it you need? How can God deny such love and such devotion? What is it that you need God to do for you? For Cornelius, 
he needed the gospel explained to him. And because of his love and his devotion and his giving, God gave him a supernatural experience. An angel appeared to him. He received supernatural information on a preacher's name, the city where the preacher was ministering, the house Peter was staying at, and the message was preached that brought deliverance to his entire household. Not only did God speak to Cornelius, but God prepared his servant by giving Peter a vision, preparing Peter to preach to the Gentiles. And upon hearing this message, they were saved, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they were baptized. Are you ready for your righteousness to go before you? Then apply the five strategies, expect God to draw near, and get ready for a supernatural experience. God, we thank you this morning for this word. We thank you for teaching us what happens when we express our love and our devotion to you in our giving. And God, I pray as they be obedient to your word and that you move on them, that you would bless them. Give them financial breakthroughs, God. Help their businesses explode with growth. God, bless the pastor who is trying to do your work. Work for them. Give them that breakthrough. Help them pay their bills. Cancel their debts, I pray. In the name of Jesus. If you'd like to sow into the ministry, you can go to seanpender.net forward slash give. Or you can give through PayPal at paypal.me forward slash Sean Pender Ministries. You can send your donation by mail, by mailing it to Sean Pender Ministries, P.O. Box 117442, Carrollton, Texas, 7501171442. It's been a pleasure coming before you every morning this week. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so now. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come before you. Be blessed, and Pastor Sean will be with you tomorrow. We love you. Have a great day.